Hello again, everybody. Um, discussing now, if let's say you have a short and a fuse blow, you have to know, First, the first thing I do is I take out the schematic and I see what else the fuse is connected to. Now, especially with Hondas, you have something called a multi-fuse. I think I went over it yesterday. High-rated fuses. And it could be in one unit. This is 120 amps. This is 70 amps. So, when these blow, sometimes, you know what? You, have, you can't get from a parts store. You actually have to go to the dealer to get the parts. Well, let's say you put in the fuses, and then you still have a short. So, what are you going to do? You're going to blow these again. The best thing is to go in to make an ohms test. And now, before I get to that, I wanted to explain a few things. Now, on the meter, let's say where I just had... You're going to measure ohms. This is the average meter. I put it on 200, the lowest scale. This is the ohm scale. So there would be one probe, there would be another probe. When, when I took the two probes and I shorted them together, I should get close to zero. I didn't. So if I'm not sure of the probe, if it's good or not, what I do is I put it in the slot like this. You see? It's set on ohms, and it should be 0.3 ohms. That means this probe is good. That's the fastest and easiest way to do it. You could do it the other way also, where you just go and you take one end and measure the other end and see if you have continuity. But this is much more easier. I'm just going here. I'm measuring this to see if this bro probe is broken, because the other probe that I had here was broken. I took it out. This one I just put in here. And watch, 0.3. And you want to get 0.3. You want to get very low. If you have above one ohm, I was just I would discard discard that probe. It sh you should not have high ohms with a probe. Getting back to uh, to this. Getting back to this. Let's pay attention to the to what the fuses are connected to. The ratings of them are they in common with something else, or do they just go to one circuit? And that makes a difference. And you'll see why. Let's say over here, this is 30 amps. We have current flowing from here to here. We also have current going to the individual components or lines. So current will flow. This is a 30 amp to the rate for the fan, for the fan. This is for the condenser fan. This is for the compressor clutch. The smallest ratings that you have is for the compressor clutch. The highest ones that you have are for the thirty for, for the condenser fan and radio fan. Fans take a lot of um uh, draw a lot of current. Keep that in mind. So how much is the total current? 120 amps. Here comes another path. This goes to wherever it's going to. To drivers, under dash, whatever it is, I have to look up the rest of the diagram. Whatever that is, draws can draw 30 amps. So these are high rated fuses that take a lot of current. Low ones take 7.5 amps, but you look at this path over here, here's another path. So current will flow from the battery, we said to all these components, fine. Current also has another path through this path. And where does it go? Now it goes through other fuses. It goes to these other control relays, whatever their purposes are, a heater relay, a seat heater relay, um, all these things on this one. So this path goes here. This path also goes to the blower motor. Now, the blower motor, as I've been telling you, also has 30 amps, draws a lot of current. 30 amps is a lot. This one draws 15 amps. This one draws 7.5 amps. Not so bad. Okay? So, the door locks over here are 20 amps. Two of them. A sliding door. Now, you know when you have power or sliding door, power seats... Power windows, power locks, somehow you have a motor involved. 
either that motor can turn probably bi-directional, which means if I have a motor for the window to go down, that means I, I use the same motor to go up. We don't have two separate motors. We have one meaning bi-directional means it could go one way to turn the window down, and it could go the other way to turn the window up. We share a motor. We can't have so many motors. Parts cost more money for the manufacturer. More money means more money to the customer. We want to make everything less wiring, less components as possible so we can give it cheap. However, on the contrary, look how many electronic accessories we added. We have everything is power this, power that, sliding door for these things. Well, it's a sense of convenience and a sense of demand from the customer. So you always have to upgrade. You can't sell the same car. What happened years ago, I don't know if you know, Chevy came out, in, I guess it was the 80s, uh, she, uh, the Chevy Caprice, which was one of the strongest cars. It was a police car. One of the strongest cars Chevy ever made. A tank. Well, you know what happened? They weren't selling too many. And they also didn't have to repair too many. And when you don't sell too many, and when you don't repair too many, guess what? You don't have to manufacture too many. And you don't sell too many. So they say, forget about that car. Let's make other cars. The quality went down. Came Toyota and said, listen, Chevy, we'll take care of this. Came Toyota, came Honda. They perfected, <clears throat> they perfected the ways <clears throat> of an engine. A uh, four-cylinder, a V6, they perfected it with their PC valve, PCV valves, EGR valves. Uh, I mean, everything. They just keep everything clean, the engine clean, running. I mean, it just, it, it, it's just from the 20 years ago, the Hondas and the Toyotas were much better cars than today. Much, much better. I think anybody will tell you that. They will last longer. 400,000 miles was nothing. I've seen it 500,000 miles. I've seen it. They are just quality. So anyway, so Chevy made a mistake. But anyway, to get to the point, let's say this one blows. I have a problem now. Now I'm connected to many, many, many circuits. I'm not gonna, just going to go and replace this, this fuse, especially if it's only available in the, in the <clears throat> dealership. Maybe I'll buy two of them just in case. But... I'm going to keep, I look it up and I say, I blew a fuse here. Why? Let me t pull out the schematic. Let me see if anything is connected to it. So again, if let's say we blew this one, no problem. Has to do something with the radio fan. And that's all it has to do with. If this one blew, it has only to do with the condenser fan. No problem. Fine. One circuit, one circuit, one circuit. How many circuits share this one? How many circuits? This circuit, this circuit, this circuit, this circuit. All of them look where the current is coming from, from this one right here. Right? That's where it's coming from. So you have to ask yourself, when I blew that fuse over here, that means any one of these circuits could be a problem child. Right? So keep that in mind. Now, the other thing in mind that I was going to say, you pull out the fuse, right? Now, I'm not going to put another fuse in. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take, obviously this is open from here to here because I took the circuit out. That means I am not connected anymore to the battery. But it blew. That means somewhere along the line, I, uh, I have low ohms. Low ohms to ground. That means I drew more than 70 amps. That's a lot. And if I blew this one, that means I drew more than 120 amps. That's a lot. So you could look for a good short to ground or something. A ohms test over here. That's why I brought out the meter. I only have one probe, like I told you. The other probe was not good. I'll look for it later. Well, just for demonstration purposes, I have the negative lead here. The negative will go to ground. The positive, if I would have the positive in here... The positive, you know where I would put it? I would put it to the other side of the fuse. Why? Why would I not put it to this side? Because this is open. This fuse blew. The loads, all the loads, 
that this is feeding is on this side. You saw all the loads are on this side. So therefore, I'm going from here to ground to here. I'll put the probe right here at the other side of the fuse. How are you gonna know? When I pull that fuse out, how am I gonna know which one is connected to this side, which one is connected to the, the positive side, that I'm going to the correct side of it, right? Okay, well, you know what you do? What I would do, go over here to this side, put one probe to the battery. Even though, even though, even though it's it has power to it, and remember when you measure ohms, you're not allowed to measure power. However, with the meters that I have, I know their their specifications, and I know what I'm allowed to do. I can measure power to it with ohms, the meters that I have, special functions. Therefore, I can go over here to the to the positive over here and. Put the other one here or here and measure continuity. In other words, I go to the positive. I go to this one. Whichever that is, I don't measure continuity. I go to the other side of the fuse. I measure continuity. That means I'm on this side of... I want the other side. Okay? Again, I have special meters. Like years ago, you had something called low power ohms. You can measure something with voltage especially ohms the old old meters those are the meters that i have not the old ones but the new ones that i have these type of functions that i'm able to do it but but otherwise when you measure ohms you have to take out the positive of the battery okay you have to take the power out of the circuit so once i'm measuring ohms let's say i'm measuring from here to ground at this point i'm measuring a ohm or two ohms definitely not good but what would that do? That would blow them. That would blow the 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 fuse. Why would I go and put another fuse in? It makes absolutely no sense, right? Just wasting fuses. This is a short step that you can do to avoid putting fuse after fuse after fuse. If I measure low ohms again, one ohm from this point on, right? The fuse is out. This is open circuit. But that means any one of these loads connected to it could be a problem. Now I'll start taking off this fuse, this fuse, this fuse, and see where it goes. However, to make sure that nothing else is connected to these. Let's say over here, I pulled out this fuse. This is the culprit. That means there's one circuit, two circuits. There's two circuits over here. One of them has to be shorted to ground. I don't know which one it is, right? When I opened up this fuse, it just told me that two of these right are a problem right but i could go to this fuse now right go to this part of the fuse do an ohm meter over here because i know when i did an ohm meter from here to here and i took out this fuse the problem went away the ohms went high so I know I'm dealing with this one. But I don't know if the problem is in this one. I don't know if the problem is in this one. That's why I say take out the, take out the schematic. Take out the schematic. You don't know if, if this is feeding a bunch of loads or one high circuit. If I look at this, I don't know if this is feeding one circuit or maybe two circuits. I don't know. That's why I take out the power distribution part of the schematic and even if you put another fuse and you got lucky it didn't blow maybe next time it will blow this is the safest way to do it okay now we go over here let's say again we said over here i took this out this fuse four i took it out and i and i put my probe over here ohms again when i took out this one the ohms went high that means this is the problem. If I take this one out and the ohms goes high, that means this is the problem. So somewhere along here, you have to see if you could get a, if you, if you could take out a connection to these. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it might be a wire, or maybe there's a connector you can't take it out. Fine, but sometimes if you can't, you just have to go one by one and try to use common sense. 120 ohms. The alternator. When 
the alternator still has a regulator that still needs DC to it. The alternator is an AC generator. An AC generator with three phase, and then it has diodes. Diodes are rectifiers inside. Those diodes take that AC and changes it to DC so it could go, replenish or recharge the battery, and still keep all these accessories going. You see, when this is di discharged, right, these accessories still have to be going. The fuel injectors still need current. The, the ignition coils still need current. If he's not able to do it, we'll find someone who can do it. He'll do the job. So after that, the current comes back up here through this big fuse, feeds this. At the same time, it feeds all these also. And at the same time, when, the f when it goes back here, guess what? It also feeds, not the starter, we already have the starter, it's, it's cranking. And it feeds all of these. So it's feeding all the accessories until this is able to do it for the, when you turn on, start the car on the next time. Remember, if you have a bad alternator, your battery will die because it didn't charge it up. It takes about maybe 20, 30 minutes to charge it up fully. So that's that. Now, the other thing is a battery test. A battery test for a battery. A battery, your lead acid has an internal resistance in it. Think of it as a resistor inside. The more the resistance, the more it was discharged. So therefore, there are, I showed you two of them, and I'll show you, I'll demonstrate it. One method is the low test to put actually a load on it where current is drawn. The other thing is to make a resistance test of the battery. When you know the resistance is good internally, you know how much current it can supply. That's another different test. So that's just something to look for to look to look forward to, I guess. So again, take out the schematic, see where this this blue. If I go and I look and I measure all the all the fuses in a fuse box, and I go and I and I come to this conclusion over here, to this one, right power sliding door, and I see okay fuse eight. I look at the diagram. This. Uh, the fuse eight, I think it's fuse eight. Yeah, this one has blown at 20 amps, so therefore something is wrong here. But if I don't know that, and I take this fuse out, even though it's part of another one, and I say, okay, there's a bunch of fuses, then I have to start and say, okay, let me put my ohm meter here to ground and see which one of these when I take out the fuses. Now, the rating of this is 70 amps. 70 amps i was asked a question by a viewer how is it only 70 amps when all of these add up more than 70 amps well when you see a fuse at 30 amps it doesn't mean it gives out 30 amps it doesn't mean that it probably give out maybe let's say maybe 80 percent of it maybe 20 25 amps depending on, on the speed of the motor this one if it's 15 amps maybe it'll give out 10 amps as a cushion, as a protection, they give you more amps. That doesn't mean I'm going to draw 14 amps. This is tw that doesn't mean I'm going to draw 19 amps, and it will still will blow. No, you think about it like maybe 80% uh, uh, usually go for. So 7.5 amps, maybe I'll draw four, five amps. Altogether, these should not m drain more than 70 amps. If it will. Then, if, they, if one of these go bad and draws 80 amps, this will go. I have two, two fuses over here. If I draw more than 40 amps, which one will blow? This one will blow. If I draw more from the alternator, if I draw more than 150 amps, which one will blow? This one will blow. So I hope you understand that, and I hope you, I can get more views in the future. Thanks for watching.